Hi, welcome to a new session of analog circuits. In today's class, we are going to discuss about ripple factor calculations for diode rectifier under half wave rectifier and under full wave rectifier. In our previous classes, we have seen all these waveforms and we have also calculated the form factor. And today we are going to show our interest in ripple factor. So what is actually meant by ripple? For example, if at all you consider a full wave rectifier output where you have input and output waveform voltages in this fashion, uh, then ripple means if at all you have input like this and if at all you plot the output and the output seems to be like this. So this kind of behavior of waveform are regarded as ripples in the waveform. So ripple factor indicates that there should not be any ripple in the waveform. Your output waveform or your required waveform, it should be always of ripple free. So that is the importance of ripple concept and we are going to see the derivation now. So when you take into the consideration of the definition, it is defined as the ratio of RMS value of the alternating current component of the output to the average value of the output. Specifically, it is denoted by gamma, which is equal to uh, the ratio of RMS value of an AC signal to the average or DC value of that signal. Okay. If at all we consider this one as equation one, and also uh, let us consider a current signal or a current waveform, a practical current waveform is uh, having two types of waveforms in it. One is the AC waveform and one is the DC waveform. And if at all I want an AC, so the equation changes to I minus IDC. Let me treat this as equation two. And now uh, the standard definition of IAC RMS, if at all you take into the periodic waveform signal, then it is nothing but root mean square of uh, the value of the wave. So it is under root of 1 by 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi, i ac square d theta. Now we'll make use of equation 2 and we'll substitute in this ac square. Then I'm going to get i minus i dc square d theta. And equation 3 seems to be in the form of a minus b whole square whose formula is a square plus b square minus 2ab. So I'll elaborate this equation 3. Then I'm going to get i square plus i dc square minus 2 times of i i dc d theta. Let me multiply this d theta individually with i square i dc square so that I am going to get the equation in this form. Fine. So we have taken this equation and let us apply a mathematical approach like squaring on both sides. So if at all I square on both sides and if at all I apply individually integral to each and every term, the equation 4 changes to, uh, sorry, equation 4 is obtained uh, in this fashion, where you can see integral is applied along with the value of 0 to 2 pi and 1 by 2 pi is multiplied at each and every interval of this particular equation. Fine. Let me divide this equation into three halves as first half, second half and third half. I will individually solve uh, this half 1, half 2 and half 3 and I will substitute this I, uh, Roman I, Roman uh, double I and Roman triple I and I will substitute in equation 4. So first I will consider the conditions of I. Uh, please make a note of this that uh, IDC is equal to that is a DC component of any signal is given by 1 by T 0 to T IDT. This is the notation you should remember in your mind before solving any particular uh, concept of uh, signal. Just keep in your mind that IDC constant value can be obtained as 1 by T integral 0 to T of I D theta. Okay. First I will consider this first half that is I R M S square whose actual formula is nothing but 1 by pi sorry 1 by 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi I square D theta. This itself value is, is nothing but I R M S square value. So first half is solved like this. Take the second half which is nothing but 1 by 2 pi 0 to 2 pi I DC square D theta. Now I DC square DC it indicates it's an amplitude value. So I can take it out from this integral. So this becomes I D square by 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi D theta. This will give you the value as I DC square. I hope you understood how we got this 
uh, integration integration of dt dash theta apply the upper limit and lower limit and this 2 pi is there so 2 pi 2 pi gets cancelled and we left over with idc square so the second half is, can be replaced by idc square like this now for the third half i am taking this third half 1 by 2 pi 0 to 2 pi 2 i idc d theta okay now what i am going to do i will take the value of this idc outside so it becomes 2 idc by 2 pi fine integral 0 to 2 pi i d theta now you please uh, remember that we have taken a note of idc is equal to 1 by t 0 to t i d theta can be replaced by idc here you can see this 2 pi is nothing but can be treated as t and 0 to 2 pi can be treated as also a t and i d theta so i can replace this integral with the denominator 2 pi value as idc already i have 2 idc over here so it becomes what 2 idc square clear yeah. now uh, this first half second half and third half can be placed in equation 4 like this iac rms square is equal to first half i got the value as i rms square from second half i got idc square from third half i got this minus sign is from equation 4 minus 2 idc square in fact equation 5 can be framed from equation 4 like this i rms square minus idc square okay now what you do uh, take the gamma concept that is the ripple factor concept and from equation 5, we got the value of IAC RMS is equal to root of IRM square minus IDC square. And I'll apply this gamma formula that is IAC by IDC RMS value. And from equation 5, this value is changed to under root of IRMS square minus IDC square by IDC. Let me modify this equation to like this such that I can get the ratios in terms of IRMS square by IDC square minus 1. And overall, the formula is nothing but gamma is equal to under root of IRMS by IDC whole square minus 1. Fine. Now, for a half wave rectifier, this is how the output looks like. So, you should know what is the average value, that is the DC value and RMS value. So, remember we have derived for 0 to t less than 2 pi, the value of average is 0 0.637 times of the maximum value of the wave. And now for 0 to pi, same average value is obtained to be 0 0.3185 times IM for this particular wave. Okay. Now RMS value is nothing but 0 0.5 IM. This is for half a rectifier. You can look into our previous videos for the derivations of uh, RMS value and average value for half a rectifier as well as for full wave rectifier. Anyhow, our interest is to calculate the ripple factor. So ripple factor is given by this formula, and I'm substituting the values of RMS and average value and this gives us the value as 1.21. Now the ripple factor of a half wave rectifier is obtained to be 1.21. So this is the value of ripple factor for half wave rectifier. Okay. Now if you tell you consider full wave rectifier, this is the output of full wave rectifier. You should also know that for 0 to t less than pi, that is from first interval itself, you can calculate the average value which is nothing but 0 0.637 IM. And for RMS value, it is nothing but IM by root 2, so it becomes 0 0.707 IM. And if you want to calculate the ripple factor, this is standard formula, I'm going to get the value as 0 0.482. Now, initially, what I told you, our waveform should be of ripple free. So, when you go for full wave rectifier, the ripple factor is 0 0.482, and ripple factor for half wave rectifier is 1.21. So, which rectifier you will choose for your practical application? In fact, diode rectifier I can choose for my practical application because it has less ripple compared to half wave rectifier. So that's the conclusion of this class. Half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier, these are the outputs and the ripple factor pattern you calculate. The full wave rectifier ripple factor is 0 0.482, which is comparably very less compared to the half wave rectifier ripple factor. So I hope you like this class. Please share among your friends and subscribe to this channel for uh, future notifications, you have to press the bell icon. Thank you.